again. I'm Kathy Snyder. And I'm Marilyn Smith. And we're the Sisters of the Traveling Plants. And we do programs for the library and other groups. And this particular program is one that we've enjoyed before, and it's called The Language of Flowers. And it really ties in to the theme this year for St. John's County Reads, which is secrets. Because we learn through uh, working with Victorian dictionaries about flowers that women in that time were not free to express their feelings. Exactly. And a lot of restraint. Right. And so they would use flowers and arrangements, nosegays, arrangements, things like this, to express what they were feeling. Because they couldn't say what they were feeling. But they could take flowers and make that message. We have enjoyed many books that we got from the library, and uh, we suggest that if you aren't in a book club, that the library has book clubs at every branch, and that you join that library, because it will have, have books listed, or books that you wouldn't necessarily pick up, but will be interesting to you, and will give you a whole new area to explore. And that's what we did with this particular book called Floriography. And it is a gorgeous book, and it has illustrations of lots and lots of different flowers, and it has a discussion of that Victorian meaning of the flower and why they, why they felt that way about it. A lot of times it was a literary reference, or maybe it was a characteristics of the flower itself that, that brought that definition forward. We had a book club that studied years ago a book that is also on your library shelf called The Language of Flowers. And this is a contemporary book, not a Victorian book. And it's a wonderful book about a young lady who is in the foster care system. And she can right. express herself. Mm -hmm. She's been very uh, victimized and abused over years and years. And she finds, by working for a florist, that she can express herself through the arrangements that she makes. And it's a fascinating book, and I think you would enjoy it if you think about picking, picking it up and enjoying it and uh, sharing it with your friends. We are going to make arrangements today that will give that message, a message. And uh, some of them will be positive messages. Yes. And some of them <laughs> will not be so yes. positive. So that you could hide secrets in flowers. Yes. And it's a fun uh, way to explore that sort of choreography. This is all part of a, a bigger program, St. John's County Reads, and it has two books that are fiction books and a young adult fiction book and then a nonfiction book. And we hope that you will participate and read some of these books, and that will make you branch out and discover all the wonderful things in your library. The whole project, St. John's County Reads, will culminate in a fun one. Mm -hmm. And it's late January. Right. Uh, be cool. Uh, yes. But that'll be good, good for fun one in, in Florida. <laughs> and it's in Nocatee. And what's wonderful about the fun run is the funds that it raises will help produce programming like this and the other wonderful programs that go along with St. John's County Reads. Uh, there's a brochure at your library that you can get that shows you where the programs are going to air, what the programs are about. So check that out. Uh, we love doing programs at the library because you have this wonderful resource, these uh, wonderful magazines, uh, publications, uh, DVDs, all sorts of things to back up what you're doing. So uh, read, enjoy, and we'll show you some fun with flowers in just a minute. And libraries have their very own book clubs. That's true. So not only join the library, but try out their book club. Right. If you don't have friends near you who you can get together with, you can do a public one. Yes. We'll see you soon. We're back. We're ready to show you a very beautiful arrangement in a 
in, in a Victorian yes, flower arranger. The, the vessel is called a Victorian flower arranger. Right. And, and it's uh, gorgeous. It actually has a beautiful silver grid, which Victorians would have called a frog, where you put the uh, any stems through the openings in the grid. Uh, we took that out today because we have so many stems that uh, it's easier to uh, put the wet oasis in and plug the stems into it where, where we want. Now, if you're not familiar with oasis, yeah, this is what beginner, it looks like. Uh -huh. And it's also called aqua lock or aqua foam. And we're trying to wean ourselves off of it, but we're not there yet. <laughs> but it's inside this silver container in a plastic bowl because we don't want the water and all the greenery yes. to come in contact with the silver. So there's a plastic bowl in here full of this oasis and then we started to construct our, our arrangement from that point. Mm -hmm. We're going to point out some of the flowers that are in this arrangement and in general this is a very positive arrangement. This is a pot. This is an arrangement you would display when you're with friends, give to a friend, uh, it just has a very, very positive message, and you'll, you'll, when we tell you each flower, you'll see that the uh, the aura of this arrangement is very positive. And it might be a good time to say that uh, early in the program, that any time they receive something with a lily, the lily is the signal uh, in this this secret code. Mm -hmm. uh, that says this bouquet, this arrangement, whatever has a message. Right. So you saw a lily, you knew it. You knew. It, it There's was a message a, in there. There's something to read there. there. Um, I, I will tell you in addition, um, we have compiled a dictionary, four-page dictionary, of the language of flowers. And it will be available to you through your local branch. When this program airs, they will have copies of this that you can go and pick up yourself. So you have right at your fingertips your own little dictionary of flowers, their meanings, how you can use them. The beauty of the books is that the, the authors uh, oftentimes give you great combinations in the back. If you want to express a, a regret, if you want to express sympathy, if you want to express uh, joy about someone graduating, they give you suggestions of flowers that you can make an arrangement mm -hmm. with, and they will send, put the lily in, that message. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a, a in a way, it's, it's like the social media it's of flowers. Today. Yes. In, that, in that you're communicating more, like emojis, you're communicating more than, uh, than just that flower. It actually has something behind it and we'll tell you what that means. It's like Victorian Morse code, right? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. All right, well let's look at our flower arrangement and we'll tell you about the parts mm. in it. Um, we have uh, lovely red roses and if there is a flower that has a million different interpretations, it is the rose. Roses were very popular, they were grown, they were used and they had so many different meanings. Now the red rose we have here is deep red and beautiful, and that is mature, you know, really uh, grown up type love. Whereas a pink rose is more uh, innocent yeah, love. Innocent love, you know, yes. Kind of not sure about it. White roses are for purity, kind of almost like uh, at a distance love. But the red rose is that that really passionate love. And so that's what we've used here. Of course, we have the lily to show that it's a message. And we have uh, amaranth, which is this plant right here. Mm -hmm. And that's singularity. That means you're, you're unusual, you're, you're one of a kind. Uh, we have uh, the artichoke, which doesn't look all that, uh, it looks a little threatening, but it's not because it, it has a tender heart. So that's what the artichoke means. It means tender heart. Um, we have uh, the... We put a palm in. A palm, and that's victory over adversity. And well, we're going to uh, roll it around so you can see the back of the... Uh, and this is croton. Right. This is apple peel croton. Mm -hmm. You're probably familiar with the more orange. This is... 
um, a more pink. And that really symbolizes change, change. but positive change. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe somebody's had a baby or something like that. Their life has changed, but it's in a positive way. Mm -hmm. It's not a negative meaning. And Arbor Vitae is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's unchanging, unchanging love. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, in general, a very, very positive arrangement. Uh, eucalyptus, uh, we've got the berries back here, and that is for protection. So, uh, you know, if you were giving this to someone, that might mean that you feel that about them. And uh, not every flower in your arrangement has to have a meaning, but you would read that there's some message here, and it probably would be most communicated by the right. big flowers, mm -hmm. the roses, things like that. Mm -hmm. I think we've covered all the flowers in it. Mm -hmm. And once again, we've stayed low in the, uh, the arrange, in the container, and we've kind of done a little bit of a diagonal shape on this. Did you do the bleeding part? Uh, we didn't do bleeding part. Okay. And, uh, I don't know if it has. I do, I do have a... Uh, Here you go. Yeah. It means compassion and love. Great. And so this, as I said, is a very loving, uh, positive arrangement. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a pretty back as well as a... a and there you see that palm, that uh, triumph over adversity. Think about Palm Sunday. Uh, that's you know that's that, that's a very uh, and the bleeding heart um, is the bleeding heart of Jesus. Victorians were very much into religious yes. iconography yes. and meaning. So a lot of times the flowers reflected that. And uh, so this could be a very lovely arrangement on your table mm -hmm. uh, when you're entertaining people that you love, or it could be a, a very lovely arrangement to give to someone. So it totally positive and full of love and full of uh, affection and caring. So I think you could have a good time with you this. You could. And you can put vegetables or fruit in mm -hmm. your arrangements. Kathy and I have been doing that for ever. <laughs> one, of the, one of the fruits that you could take, if you wanted to take one of the artichokes mm. out, a pear means affection. Oh, so you could substitute mm -hmm. uh, one of those beautiful red pears for one of the artichokes mm -hmm. if you'd like. Mm -hmm. But we think this is a, a pretty arrangement to have on your dining room table, on your sideboard, in front of a mirror. Mm -hmm. um, just really will make a show. And uh, many of these plants, uh, like the arbovita, like the croton, like the palm, uh, loripetalum, you can grow yourself. And, that, and then you just pay for the the flowers and so you you know you're you're getting a bigger arrangement and you're actually producing a lot of the parts of it so we hope you like this arrangement mm -hmm. and you like the message and i think if you're looking for containers uh, and you're a beginner it is good to find one that is footed mm -hmm. it makes it more interesting ovals i think are wonderful mm -hmm. and unpredictable mm -hmm. that that's kind of a nice thing so mm -hmm. uh Look at look for containers that are fun and give you room to to work in if you're if you're a beginner, right? And uh, as Marilyn mentioned, the feet. If you do it in a bowl or something like that, you can always sit it on a cake stand. Yes, and uh, tuck some moss around it. Moss is maternal love, so nice. that won't hurt if, if yes. you tuck that in around and it. And pedestals are great. There's mm -hmm. just something about um, not having it sit flat that uh, jump starts you right away if you're if you're a beginner. Mm -hmm. So we hope you enjoy it. Yes. do another. We'll do the second arrangement. Mm -hmm. This will also be very positive in, in nature. In message. Yeah, mm -hmm. in message. And it will be uh, a friendly message, which, you know, uh, most flower arrangements are given with that. Yes, it's the best kind. anyway. Mm -hmm. But before we get started on the arrangement, I do want to talk about some of the flowers we have on the front of the table that have that are grown in our area. You're growing it, we're growing it, and it has meaning. We're not necessarily gonna put it in an arrangement today, but this will give you some ideas of things that you know are readily available and what could you do with them? What, what message could they send? First of all, we have a little magnolia, which is the little gem 
variety. It has the beautiful brown back mm -hmm. and the glossy Great, green. Magnolia. And magnolias is it, it conveys dignity. It's a, a stately tree, and that's where the the uh, definition for the not only the foliage but the flower uh, both convey is that uh, that idea of dignity. Here's jasmine, which we ha this happens to be a downy jasmine, but uh, in general, we have lots of jasmine in our area, Confederate jasmine, mm -hmm. lakeshore jasmine, uh, all sorts. Uh, and that is amiability and cheerfulness. So that's a wonderful thing to include in an arrangement. Here is a piece of Hoya vine. And it's, it's great to use if you want to drape in an arrangement. Easy to root, easy to start an, another plant, several plants. And it is strength and these are strong plants they are. they're durable they're not they're wonderful invasive, to grow. Uh, but they mm -hmm. they're easy to work with uh flexible if you wanted to create a handle over a small container like a basket effect you can do it with hoya Right now, our uh, hibiscus are performing at an amazing look at uh, the rate. back of that. Can you uh, show this is the a, back? this is a beauty. It, it's it's a gorgeous. really deep deep red, and it has a yellow back. Sometimes mm. in the summer, it's kind of almost, almost like a chartreuse back. But but as you know, if you grow hibiscus, you go one day with the flower. So the definition of hibiscus is delicate beauty, meaning it's not going to last long. It's beautiful while it's while you've got it but it doesn't have a lot of strength, but gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. And if you've got an arrangement that you just are going to do for a day, the hibiscus does a wonderful job. And it's a fun plant to grow and very easy to grow in our area. We've also got on the front of the table a, a flower that we are going to use in just a few minutes called passion flower, the passion flower vine. The long piece. And this ties in to that Victorian idea of religious symbolism in flowers. The passion flower has uh, the five petals, uh, or I guess 11 petals, uh, uh, that's, I'm sorry, 10 petals for the faithful disciples. Uh, it has a stamen, and, and if you read the definition of uh, passion flower, it is totally a religious flower. It is totally uh, uh, couched in religious iconography. So we're going to use it today because mm -hmm. it's blooming like crazy right now. And this is the variety that's called red, but it actually reads kind of burgundy. And it also comes in white and it comes in blue, mm -hmm. which is more purple. So that's a fun plant to mm -hmm. grow. The cold, the cold will affect it. Right, right. Uh, uh, okay. We have a begonia here. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, this is our, uh, we love these begonias. And begonia is many, many different uh, varieties and be gone yeah so it's actually a plant that's telling you to, to get lost gone. yes <laughs> so but they're beautiful to use in arrangements but kind of fun and it has kind of a little bit of a negative meaning be gone yeah right uh, ivy ivy mm -hmm. and that's that as you know if you grow ivy it's attaching to everything and it needs fidelity and attachment and so if you wanted to show some, demonstrate your loyalty to someone or your affection for them and that you'd be there for them, Ivy would be a wonderful thing to add to your arrangement. Mm -hmm. And last but not least right now, yeah. camellias are, are in abundance. And uh, we're getting towards the end of the season and, and just a gorgeous flower beautiful. and millions of different varieties. So what, read that uh, Camellia. Of it. Longing for affection. I'm, I'm trying to read your writing. Okay. <laughs> I think Longing it's... for no. no for love. No longing for you. Oh. And it actually comes from uh, the definition for camellia comes from an Alexander Dumas novel. You know he wrote uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, I believe, and uh, it was a doomed love affair. Uh, two people that were very, very, and and it's the Romeo and Juliet story all over again. You know, he thinks she's dead, so he kills himself, and she comes back, and so <laughs> she kills herself. So it has a kind of a, 
uh, of a sad sort of love story <laughs> sure behind it. But there. it also is, uh, it also means perfect beauty, which uh, camellias are just that. They're, they're, they're blooming at a time when the rest of your, your yard is brown and dead, and here come these camellias and sasanquas blooming and just giving you all that feeling of spring in the middle of winter. So if you don't have a camellia plant or a sasanqua plant, think about it, because it will give you flowers when flowers are in short supply. Well, we're gonna work on this new arrangement, our arrangement number two, and we have this gorgeous silver piece it's, that belongs to Marilyn mm -hmm. and her family. And tell us what this it's is. It's a Victorian water server. You would have it by your side of the bed with <laughs> water in it. <laughs> what a bed you must have to too close to side yeah. your bed. Yeah. And, and the, the, cup that you would sip from this yeah. year. So we've been putting it in our flower shows through the years. And, uh, you know, we do an arrangement up here. Uh, we should probably show you that's all you need in there. Uh, this was a guacamole container. <laughs> Just pop it right in there. There's a ridge. It holds right on it. Mm -hmm. Oasis wet and more wet oasis in there. Uh, we raised the oasis a little bit because we're going to show you, if you're a beginner, uh, a good way to get started on an arrangement is to collar it first. So if your, uh, your oasis uh, protrudes upwards a little bit, that will help you instead of being down in there. It'll, if, if it's down in too far, it causes your greenery sometimes to stick up. So uh, we're going to start with arborvitae mm -hmm. and uh, build it a little collar, and then we'll add some flowers. It doesn't take much to do this, which is good. You could be done if you have company coming. This could be for the guest bedroom. Okay, this is Arbavada means unchanging friendship. So yes. this is going to be a very friendly, affectionate uh, arrangement. Mm -hmm. It's going to be full of love, full, full of caring, full of compassion. So we're going to collar it with Arbavada. And uh, another plant that would you could sub in for Arbavada is hemlock because hemlock also has that flat uh, stem, but has a very negative meaning. It really means that you won't survive me, because <laughs> hemlock, if you remember, is, is what uh, uh, Socrates drank the tea from to kill himself. Can we, was, can we grow hemlock in Florida? Oh, absolutely. We have okay. huge hemlock trees. We, we do well with arborvita, hemlock, cedar, uh, even on the island that Marilyn and I live on, Anastasia Island, the, the sea air does not bother. These are tough, tough trees. And if you uh, get into, uh, and it is very interesting, uh, the information, language the language flowers. of flowers, uh -huh. you're going to learn there's a language of trees, too. It's not just flowers. And there's vegetables, and there's all sorts of things. So, you know, it really goes on forever, and it's kind of fun to to read what was on their minds, you know, the way that they looked at the living world. And they felt uh, very close to uh, many of uh, uh, families had gardens and, and, and beautiful estates that had lots and lots. And they cared about what they planted and they cared about what it meant, uh, what the statement of huge magnolia trees leading up to your house really showed that dignity and strength that you wanted to have in those manor houses. Okay, so she's gone around the top of the, the water mm -hmm. container, water vessel, with uh, the arborvita, and it does a beautiful job of, of draping, and, and that's, you know, that's really what you want. You always want to cover your mechanics. Now we're going to work with a coleus, yeah, which is his name, because is Wicked Witch. Oh, I but uh, the we coleus is beautiful, uh, outstanding beauty. And I think that comes from the fact that coleus is that flower that's not a flower. The leaves are the show. The flower is incidental, but the leaves are the show. So it really is, if you are having trouble growing flowers per se, try some coleus. Oh, uh, it's... It gives you all the color of flowers and a lot less uh, heartache. 
a lot less care and everything else. And it gives you that gorgeous color. And this particular one is just spectacular. It's beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. I love growing Wicked Witch. Mine is still looking great. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that took up a lot of real estate, but mm -hmm. it is the show. Mm -hmm. it's now you want to make so sure great. it gets a, a lot of water. Uh, yes. It's a watery stem. It's a, it's, a, it's a heavy drinker. So you want to make sure that you've got it where it will get a lot of water in your container. Uh, you know, you can take a rose stem and bore out a hole in your oasis. Or your scissors. Or your scissors. Drill a just hole. Make a little hole. Almost like a little vase. Like a little, almost like a flower pick. A water pick. And, and make sure that coleus gets plenty of, uh, of water. And another great trick Kathy and I have learned through the years, just trial and error. Uh, we've put a round container in there. Mm -hmm. The oasis is square. Mm -hmm. So you will have places around the edge where hydrangea is one, hydra. It needs lots of water. Mm -hmm. This particular one also, the coleus, you can just slip them down the side so they're in water. They're not in oasis. Mm -hmm. And they will last longer uh, because of that. Okay, what do you think? Lizzie Anzis? Or do you think, do this great well, big red rose? rose All right, we'll do the great big Once red rose. Once again, we've used the red rose. And uh, as I said, the rose probably has more um, interpretations than any, any other flower. And that's because there are so many varieties, so many different colors and everything else. But you go by the color. And the redder the rose, the deeper and more affectionate the love is, the more mature it is. And we use the deep red rose because it plays so well now, with, with our coleus. I I'm mean, drilling a hole. Yeah, all right, because I don't think this rose is good. Yeah. Okay. The shorter the stem on a rose, the longer it's going to last. You know, if you have a real long stem, you're going to, your rose is going to die quicker. So uh, sometimes the uh, arrangement looks right with long stems, and you just go for that. You just know that that's not going to prolong the life of the rose. And to recut your rose every day is a good idea. To change yes. your water change every the day. Water. Yes. Uh, there are many theories about you know combinations of, of, of uh, potions you can put in your water to keep your plants alive. And they give you a little packet from the grocery store or the flower provider that, that basically keeps the water mm -hmm. cleaner. Nothing is better than clean water. That's the most important part. Now, she just tucked in Hypericum. some I'm loving the hypericum yeah. right there. Because, it, it, you know, we needed that little berry shape. We needed, um, we have lost our little hypericum definition. Here it is <laughs> right here. All right. Okay. Hypericum. Takes a minute. Good health, protection, rebirth. Um, so, it, once again, it's a very positive arrangement. And we've got our Lysianthus coming in. And Which this uh, is the bigger one. Mm -hmm. I think the, the rose is such a show yeah. that we'll just do some buds up in here and see if we like that. Now, when you see the uh, Lysianthus, which means appreciation, and certainly, if you're That's a good a friend, friend. Yeah, if you're a good friend, you do appreciate the people in your life. You appreciate the people that that help you be happy, and you want them to be happy. So, Lysianthus is a wonderful flower to use. And what we like about it is it mimics the shape of a rose. It really does. Mm -hmm. It has that that bud form, and it holds the bud form, and then it will bloom out. But it comes in many, many colors. And uh, it's, it's a fun flower to work with. And it's pretty uh, long-lasting, which is nice. Okay, I think I've got it. Okay, Ooh. all right. Well, we're liking right, this. So this, this is where this we is gonna, are. This is going to be a very velvety-looking arrangement mm -hmm. because you've got the velvety nature of the coleus, the rose, and you've got the pretty shine of the, be the berries, the hypericum berries. Hypericum comes in many different uh forms and it is part of the hypericum oh st john's wort family oh you're right it is yes, the berry of st john's mm -hmm. wort and marilyn was said well if we ate them would it perk us up <laughs> no do not eat hypericum berries they are poisonous <laughs> they must do something else make you relax where you uh, <laughs> you might permanently relax if you ate the berries in fact many flowers many plants ivy for instance are not to be ingested 
And so if you have, uh, if you're growing these things, think, give some thought about where your pets are. In relation I was just going to gonna say things. pets. So, uh, you know, one of the things that always comes to mind at this time of the year is poinsettia. And we know that the sap from the poinsettia can make you very sick. So, you know, back off of that a little bit or mm -hmm. be careful where you use it. And be sure you wash your hands after you've handled poinsettia. Okay, so I just put a passion vine Okay, in. there's that passion vine. I plugged vine. it in there. Mm -hmm. Again, it helped to have the oasis uh, protruding upwards a little bit. And then ran it around the side. Mm -hmm. So the next thing you would do is put a little something in the cup. Right. At the bottom that's mm -hmm. sort of reminiscent of there. But right. Kind I of mean, maybe just that. a piece of coleus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. might Get do some it. More you know, we won't talk about its name, but uh, maybe that little end piece. Mm -hmm. Let's try that. Let's do that. And I'll probably have to put a little arbor body uh -huh. in. Let's get some more. Try to think what I like. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Like that. Like that. And we'll do it opposite. Some of our flowers are jumping out of our buckets here. <laughs> yeah, we have buckets of things behind us. That's right. <laughs> we have to have supplies. We do. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. We make a little bit of a mess while we're doing this. Yes, we're and we we're do trash. We want to talk about the fact that we've been doing this together for 15 years and uh, <laughs> sisterhood programs. We met right. in a book club. Right, met in a book club. <laughs> and, uh, but Flower arranging isn't necessarily a solitary. It can be a solitary experience, but it's often fun to do it with somebody else. Oh, it else is, yes. Because you kind of play off each other. You see different things, and uh, and it's a you know it's a very positive thing to do. Flower arranging. Uh, well, it brings happiness mm -hmm. to other people. I think that is it brings joy. Mm -hmm. And it gets you growing things. Yes, and it does. One of the things we've learned during uh, all the lockdowns and the uh, restrictions and everything, gardening came back. Yeah. Because people realized that gardening nurtured their souls and as much as it did the, the earth. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's a thought, too. If you live in an area where you can grow things easily, that's wonderful. Uh, you might have to do some container gard gardening in other areas. Or you might have to grow in a much smaller window in some areas. But you can grow something almost everywhere, even if you grow it indoors. But uh, it, it gives you great joy to watch uh, things spring up and come to life. In fact, that's how we're going to finish this arrangement with a radish. And uh, and the radish ah, has, uh, we lost the radish. Oh, no, it's right? there. No. I just don't know if it's not, right or not. Not liking it? Well, okay. Well, we're going to show it to you just because uh, it's fun. We'll, we'll play with it. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is called a watermelon radish. It is a radish on steroids. It is. It's a little bit big. Okay. And you can get some small ones at this time of year. But what we like about the watermelon radish is that it has this beautiful pink interior. And uh, when you cut it, you'll see that. You see that interior. Uh, we especially use lots of radishes in our spring arrangements. Because that's when, I mean, radishes are in abundance and you get the little Easter egg color ones, which are pink and purple and white and bundles and just just gorgeous things. And a radish is kind of a nice shape in an arrangement. Anything that's kind of round or, or uh, globe shaped looks pretty tucked in the flower arrangement. And it kind of adds a little, you know, a little interest, a little uh, something that you didn't expect. A little unexpected joy. It's coming. Yes, and she's working on the <laughs> radish. Well, while, while she's doing that, I'm going to stick some hypericum berries Do. It down in this little that. guy. Yeah. And we'll also add maybe a little bit more. Okay. Um, this is what's inside. Isn't that wonderful? Now, they're even more beautiful in the spring. Oh, I that's think. true. They, they get more colorful. Yes. As you get warmth. Uh, the skewers are... Were there okay? So Another if you want, dandy. yeah, if you want to cut something open and like this radish and put it in a flower arrangement somewhere, mm -hmm. <laughs> put it on a skewer. Mm -hmm. 
these guys have wonderful talks and, and things. So I'll just try this. This is probably not my favorite uh, radish I've ever placed or favorite. Well, I don't know. It looks pretty good with the hypericum. You never know. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh, yeah. It's fine. I think it does good. It's fine. We'll okay. finish. Oh, I think, yes. Yeah. Amber. Maybe a little bit in, in here. In there. Mm -hmm. So that'll pick up. Right there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh -huh. Oh, I love that. That's okay. gorgeous. And maybe a... one more piece okay. right there. If you have it. Absolutely. This is called. Uh, Coxcomb amaranth, uh, and it is uh, almost like a steel bee. It looks a little bit like a steel bee, but there's also a globe amaranth, and they have very different. This is uh, we're using the positive definition of this, which is sing, you are singular, you're one of a kind. I love but it. it also can have some negative meanings too. But globe amaranth, totally positive. So if you're growing that, what a fun plant to work with. And this was Trader Joe's, wasn't it? I mean, we should, no, no. This, this is farmers market. Farm market. Our farm market. Yeah, yeah. That's another place Ooh. that you can get gorgeous uh, yes. flowers and fruits and vegetables. Check out your local farmers market because there's great resource there. So that's now where we we'll are. Spin this guy around. He's just beautiful. He's got that gorgeous passion flower coming down. The red roses. Um, you know, I, I think this is a beautiful arrangement for uh, winter, a winter type arrangement because it has those deep colors and a great way to use a piece of silver that maybe you wouldn't use otherwise. It's true. And Put it uh, on a server in your dining room, uh -huh. whatever. Or in front of a mirror. We always like the mirror thing. I'm trying to think what else that. you could put other than a radish. I feel like the radish is maybe... You could do a small pair, a separate right. pair. Uh, you could probably do a plum that has that deep red color. Um, you know, if it's a if it's a, a fruit like that, like the plum that has a very thin skin, then you're going to have to swap it out some. It's going to do a little leakage. Uh, we would, if we had more room, or maybe if you could get a small one, we would love the the red thing at Christmas, the one we call. Oh, the about. pomegranate. Pomegranate. Yeah. Oh, we love to work with pomegranate. colors of that would be wonderful. Yep. But right now, our pomegranates are not as big. So monsters. we'd have to have a bigger container to work with a pomegranate yes. at this point. The first container we showed you, the oval, probably that could, could hold you know, slice yeah. it, slice it uh, right through it horizontally. Put it, turn it over, put it on paper towels mm -hmm. for a while because if they're especially juicy, that could run onto your table or something you don't want it to. So because it can stain, um, we yeah. learned the hard way. Yes, we have. That when red gets a white tablecloth, that there's some problems there. So you want to protect yourself as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But what fun! You've used something uh, historic, something Victorian. You've made a beautiful arrangement, yes. and you've had fun with it. And you send a beautiful message of friendship and support. Great. We're back for the third <laughs> arrangement, the final arrangement we're doing today. And if you look at the container, uh, our hostess has pointed out, she sees that this container is kind of prickly looking yeah. and it is <laughs> and so is this <laughs> arrangement yes <laughs> and so is this arrangement this is going to be where you don't use totally negative flowers but the but. message you're sending is not totally positive so yes. uh, oh. sometimes you have to give somebody flowers and maybe uh, like I said in Victorian times when the ladies couldn't really just say, mm. uh, please don't come to my house again. I've got no interest in you. They did have flowers that kind of said it for them. So uh, you, we want to cover that. And sometimes a subtle message is, is just as good as an overt Hit one. over the head right. message. Exactly. This is, the, this is the arrangement for the person that moved in next door to you. And the first project was to put up a 12-foot Fence. Ugly fence. Yeah. And block your ocean breeze. <laughs> right. But you want to welcome them to the neighborhood. Right. But maybe not as warmly yes. as the previous two flower arrangements. So you, you take them on arrangement. Right. So first thing is we're, we'll put, 
We'll put a lily bud in because remember, a lily signifies that there is a uh, secret mm -hmm, mm -hmm. message mm -hmm. in this. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll put that there. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we're going to start with something that's rather positive, the dignity of Magnolia, because we it's like the dignity. shape of it. Because even though you're angry, you've maintained your dignity. That's right. And you're bringing this. You're going to keep your <laughs> thoughts to yourself. Yeah, that's right, but you're going to deliver that okay. thought nonetheless. So let's okay. just put that Magnolia in there. And we like that color, that deep green color, uh -huh. and uh, the shininess of the leaf. So we'll go with that. And we're going to use some roses and finally i have a rose that sends a negative message yes and many of you have probably received yellow roses from your husband or from somebody and this rose contrary to the red rose of sophisticated or or, or really Deep uh, love. sensual love yes. or the white rose of pure love, love or innocent love. Right. Mm, this one <laughs> says I'm either cheating on you or you're cheating on me. It can also uh, convey jealousy. So a yellow rose is really not a totally positive flower, but a wonderful flower to work with because it's beautiful. So we're gonna include this uh, in our arrangement. We're gonna start so with, with do, what roses. do you think? Do, would you like to do the hydrangea okay. next? Another, I think so. Would you, another okay. little plant that has a negative message <laughs> and how many how rides many have swan down the aisle with this. And hydrangea, because it's a big showy flower, this is the little actual flower. The little bud right here is the actual flower. These are the leaves. But it makes a big show. But it produces very few seeds, and it's, so it's kind of stingy. And so really what hydrangea communicates is I'm, you're kind of indifferent. You look like you're positive, but you're really not. So if you gave somebody a hydrangea, you might say, you know, I'm really not into you. You know, you're really... I, I'm I'm guarded about you because yes. you're, you're you're not exactly who you advertise yourself to be. So let's tuck that rain okay, vessel right in there. Okay, we're gonna put that in. Once I again, added more water right. because again, we Hydra. Have, yeah, this, it's telling you. And if you're making this arrangement to last, it would be good for you to save an extra stem of hydrangea. Yes, yes. Because it can fail on you. You can revive it in water. You can submerge it in water. But once it goes down on you one time, it weakens the flower. Yes. So save one stem yes. aside so you can revive your arrangement. Okay, but it, it does make a big show. That's right. Now maybe the lily bud could go up in oh, there. Oh, I like that. That's the signal. I like that. All Absolutely. right, this has a message. Okay. Or maybe over there. I think mm -hmm. I like it over yeah. there. We, what we like about the bud of the lily is that shape, that or not. geometric shape that it's got. Let's try that. And, uh, oh, yes. Uh -huh. The signal. It's nice. It's nice because it gives that, it echoes the points of the, yes. the magnolia. All right, now. Okay. All right. We've got some fern, which can be, uh, you know, can be secret. Especially maidenhair fern is it really means that there's some secrets here or there's some secrets being kept and of course that's what the theme of the whole uh, St. John's County Reads programming is is secrets and so ferns do that very very well ferns grow in dark areas kind of damp areas they just spring up uh, and and survive sometimes uh, almost like air plants. I know this particular fern, which we do not know the name of, actually grows on my palm trees. Uh, some little bird probably visits my palm tree and makes a little seed deposit and it grows virtually in no soil at all. So ferns kind of have a different life. They, uh, they have a lot of uh, a mystery about them. So, but they're wonderful to use in an arrangement. Now she's tucked that little Cheating heart rose right in there. Yes. That yellow I'm rose. I'm trying to open it up oh, a little yes. bit. You can always. You, you can know, open a rose. Yeah, don't be afraid of your roses. Uh, this is a great hybrid rose. Mm -hmm. And get your fingers in there and, you know, work it out. Just gently push your fingers out and the rose will open up a little bit for you. We've bred roses, uh, hybridize them for sh shape and color and size. No smell at all. 
which is kind of a shame. But garden roses can give you the smell. Yeah, we These do are, find yeah, some. We that, occasionally find a rose that's got, usually yeah. they're called cottage roses, yeah. and uh, you'll yeah, get a little bit more scent on them. But but a yellow rose makes a big show. You just have to remember. I love the fern uh -huh. on the side. Okay. That's, oh, that's really that's pretty. a good look. Mm -hmm. Good look. You want okay. to take a do you one, think one? It, do you think it I needs think another it use? Use, I think it could use one more if okay. not two or, more. Yeah, I think it okay. could I think, think it could Here's form. a smaller profile one. Okay. Let's okay. let's give that one a okay. shot. Okay, I've got I've have we ended no here run we out are. of scissors. Here we are. Here we are. Here we we, are. we, we yeah. accidentally we take are. each other's yeah. scissors. It's kind of like your scissors at home. They yeah. they have they sprout legs and they walk. <laughs> and yeah. you have to have to have to really chase them down occasionally. Okay, we're liking, you want to tuck that one in uh -huh. on that side? And maybe this side. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. And uh, we're going to put some of on. these begonias, begone, mm -hmm. get out of my life, begonias, uh, leaves in. And, and uh, something a little architectural. These mm -hmm. are uh, craspedia. Craspedia. So yes. we're going to put uh, those in. They're they, fun. They really, their definition is good health. So sometimes... Yes. You have some ill feelings you, towards somebody. You, you don't necessarily want to really totally take them down and eat dirt and die. You don't want to do that. But <laughs> well, you want to you put do. them yeah, well, yeah, you know, put them in their place. <laughs> but you know, you can you can hope that that ten foot fence, foot, fence well, that they put up in between you blocking that your eventually OCGM. they'll grow uh, jasmine on it or something yes. like that it will you know or some or cut kind of, a hole in it to let you right. get some ocean right. air exactly uh -huh. so you know you have to hope that relationships can get better okay okay <laughs> right now we wish our uh our uh, in there what yeah i think so. or even so. in the hydrangea maybe no, we'll see. Sure. We can cut uh, it down. You can use a hydrangea yeah. as a frog. Exactly. And you they do a wonderful put, job of that. Yes, you could run whatever it is right down right through down, them. Yeah. And, and holds that's it kind of right fun. It'll hold it. Yeah. Uh, there you okay. go. All right. Okay, so it's coming right there's along. There's one more. Is there something else negative? Well, we're we're, 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 we're going to use uh, some more fern. Uh, Ming. Uh, this what, is what Ming is fern. Well, secrecy. Secrecy. Oh. Generally. Okay. Uh, what? We what? both grow this. Uh, Kathy's is a brighter green. It's Ming, M-I-N-G, fern. Mm -hmm. And I grow a darker variety that we use in the winter and, you know, Oh, I more. think that looks wonderful. I do. I love it. Uh, okay. The, the shades of green with the magnolia. Uh, Ming fern is not a pretty plant, but very productive, and it has wonderful little stems. Some ferns, you know, are a little bit uh, delicate. Not me. The fern yeah. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like she said, the actual plant, mm -hmm. at least here in Florida, mm -hmm. maybe somewhere else in the country, there's a little different variety, but mm -hmm. the plant's kind of woody and angry and thorny. And mm -hmm. <laughs> but so great it, to use an it arrangement. It should go in a negative arrangement. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes you want to grow the things you want to use. Uh, you can grow uh, the ferns. You can grow, obviously, magnolia. Um, we get, we have good luck in Florida here with hydrangea in the spring, but you're not going to get it year-round. But the great thing is that the grocery stores and uh, your florist uh, are going to have flowers pretty much year-round. These uh Crispedia are actually from New Zealand. Yes. And so they're kind of an exotic, but they dry. These are probably the better part of a month or two old. They they hold their color. And so they're fun they to do. use. After you pull them out of your arrangement, store them in a little dry cup and you'll use them again. So, you know, we don't want to break the bank, uh, uh, your bank, making arrangements because we want it to be fun for you. We don't want to be such an investment that, you know, that it takes the joy out of doing it. But you can do quite a bit, especially if you grow some of the components yourself, some of the greenery and, and the complementary things, and, uh, and be on the lookout for inexpensive containers. 
Uh, this is actually a little metal pot that doesn't have a seam, so I felt comfortable putting the oasis right in it and, and building the arrangement right in it. Usually anything that's metal has a seam somewhere, so you'd have to put a container inside it. But that's what plastic does so well. I mean, I guess we have to find something that plastic does well. Uh, you know, we certainly are crippling ourselves with it. Yeah. But maybe if you repurpose it and use it again you keep it out of the landfill you keep it doing something for you and, you, and it does reuse beautifully so you could line this with a plastic uh, salsa container or something like that uh, we think this one will do fine but you're going to like the look of this arrangement if you gave it to someone you they think oh how cute and oh. and you know i thank you for thinking of me yes. and uh you know i i i just i'm, I'm just great. blown away by you being so thoughtful <laughs> you me and away. you are <laughs> You are, you have thoughts. <laughs> Not all of them positive. You. But you know, you can always hope that your relationship could change. Maybe yes. the giving of the flowers yes. will will make that arrange that uh, relationship a little bit more positive. We can always hope that we can heal with flowers as well as celebrate with flowers. But I think this arrangement is turning out cute as it can be. And, uh, it needs um, uh, just a little bit of uh, something to make it dance, right, as we say. Right, right, okay, what right. do you think? Oh, now? I like it. I Are like it too. Okay. Arborvitae okay. added a lot. Yeah. But isn't that cute? And isn't that clever? And isn't that full of secrets? <laughs> it's full of filled with secrets. <laughs> so secret meaning. Marrying right. up with St. Right. John's Reeves. But we, we hope you've enjoyed this yes. as much as we enjoy yes, this. Yes, we enjoy doing it. And, uh, and we'll be back with more programming in the summer with Nature Detectives where we take on uh, one of six pollinators with kids. Children. Six through 12. Yes. Where we're hoping to shape the garden clubs of the future. future. But yep. one of the things, one of the messages we want you to remember is go get your dictionary from your library. They're going to be available and it will give you a bunch of flowers and there. And then start reading some books. They're really fascinating because this whole idea of speaking through flowers has been around for a long time and it can help you maybe get something off your chest yeah. in, a, in a productive in an appropriate way. way. And use your yes. library especially because we, oh, we are both former teachers. We believe in libraries. Uh, we want to support them. The fun run at the end of January and all of the different programs that are going to be part of St. John's County Reads. And we thank the friends of the different libraries for supporting this programming and making yes. it possible. And all the staff that helps us get these parts and pieces yes. together. Yes. <laughs> Unload the car. Load the car. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Truly. But, but we hope to see you again, and maybe in the fall, when we uh, come back, hopefully with some live flower arranging, or we hope to see your children this summer. Yes. Or That's grandchildren. Or grandchildren. <laughs> That's true. But thank you for spending some time with us. Thank and you. hopefully you'll have some fun coming out of this. Yes.